Hello, everyone. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I'm Teacher Oakley. And we are going to continue our series of classes today looking at the IELTS reading test. Once again, we're going to we're going to do some practice. We're going to look at some examples and practice questions. Now, uh, in yesterday's class, we looked at a long uh, academic style reading passage. And because it was a headings question where we had to add a title or heading to many passages, we opted to uh, read the entire article and then tackle the questions together. It was a good class and everyone did a great job. Today, we're doing something slightly different. We're going to look at uh, questions that may be more typical of the general training reading test. Uh, because we are being supplied informative, informational data, more or less, uh, and this data is organized in a way that's easy to find, uh, we're going to try a different strategy. Instead of reading the passage first, we're just going to skim it very briefly and go directly to the questions and try that strategy and see how it works for us. Let's give it a shot. Uh, welcome to the class, Faisal. Yeah, hello, teacher. Good to yeah. see you again. How are you today? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm doing great. How about you? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you very much. Uh, super. It is, you know, something, Faisal, here where I live in the Philippines, it is so hot every day. I am like Gollum living in his cave with his mm -hmm. precious, me precious, me precious air conditioner. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, in I, Indonesia, it's kind of cloudy. Is yeah. it? Oh, I would it's love to see a cloud. What's a cloud look like, Faisal? <laughs> uh, it's just uh, <laughs> a cloud. Um, I haven't seen a cloud in a long time. <laughs> wow, it's, it's just been a hot day. Sun, hot every day, and the thing is, there's no wind at all. Oh. So you just sort of bake. So I hide in my cave, Gollum, Gollum. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, nice to talk to you. Nice to have you aboard. Welcome, uh, Raphael. Nice to see you as well. How are you today? Hello. I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Her. Uh, Here is now is 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. in Brazil. Nice. Okay. Good temperature. Oh well. Good evening. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> okay. And hi. Uh, hello to Max. Hey, uh, Max. Hello, teacher Rockley. <laughs> What's new? I'm fine. Nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. If it's interesting, it's uh, 9 a.m. in Russia. <laughs> it's 9 a.m. Oh, okay. So you you must live more eastern than in more eastern parts of the country, yeah? Yes. Yeah. In I know, the middle. <laughs> yeah, because... Because I know Moscow is like four hours behind. Yeah, yeah, three, three hours. More behind between. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is ten here. Okay, uh, let's get started. Enough of the chit chat, although I, I enjoy it. Let's get started here. Okay, again, we are looking at questions which are much more. Yesterday's question was very typical of an academic version of IELTS. Today we're going to look at uh, questions which would be much more likely on the GT or general training. Uh, okay, and we're going to use a bit of a different strategy. So, uh, okay, uh, all right, let's read our instructions. Now, again, this is a suggestion. You should spend about 20 minutes. Should is an advisory modal. So if it takes less, maybe you want to take less time, maybe you want to take more time. 
please remember that it, in general, both the GT and academic versions of the test, the material gets more difficult as you move through the test. So they will give you three sections and they will say 20 minutes, they will suggest, but perhaps in reality it's better to think of the three sections more like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, thus giving you more time for the more difficult section. Uh, okay, look at the information in the service guide for the University of Northwestern Australia and answer the questions using no more than three words. Very important that you make note of the instructions for answering the questions. Uh, okay, we have a block. Questions come in blocks 15 to 21. All right, here is our information. Now, this is uh, a service guide. Okay, so this is very well organized with headers which explain what each paragraph is. So we're going to use a different strategy. We're going to just take a quick look uh, at a very fast look at the paragraphs. All right, first, so maybe you could, if you wanted, you could make notes. All right, first, health services. Second, okay, I see times and dates here. Maybe that will be relevant. Uh, second, transport. Um, all right, I see things about bus service. Uh, I see, I'm looking, as I'm scanning, I'm taking a look here at uh, capital letters. All right, so I'm thinking transport, places. Uh, okay, uh, fine. They're talking about buses and transport. Third paragraph, the student center. Uh, I might, as I scan, always take a look at things in parentheses that may be relevant. Uh, okay, career and job service, leisure facilities, part-time job. Okay, I'm just scanning quickly for uh, elements of the student center and what may come up in a question. Student union, again, I'm looking for capital letters. All right, the next paragraph, number four, international student office. All right, that pretty much says what it is, visa and immigration. Uh, also, as I, as I skim through here, what catches my eye, or, or perhaps as I quickly skim through, Perhaps repeated words, perhaps long words, like immigration, perhaps capitals, capital letters. All right. Notice we're zipping through this. We're going through this very quickly because the information essentially is very well organized. It, it has to be due to the type of information. And last, finally, we have shopping information. Well, okay. Gundini, okay. Uh, all right, let's just get right on to the questions then, because we should be able to scan for information quite quickly. Uh, before we get started, let me quickly welcome Heidi. Hello, Heidi. How are you? Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> all right, nice to have you in the class. And welcome to David. Hi, David. Uh-oh. David, do you have a problem with your microphone today? You, s you appear to be unmuted, but I cannot hear you, David. So fix her up there, buddy. Do what you have to do if you have to drop out and come back to class or you have to mess with your settings. Fix it up because oh, I I thought I heard something, David. Fix it up and uh, because you're going to be answering questions here. All right, um, I'm going to start with you, Faisal. Let's start question 15. All right. Mm, should, uh, student center. 
where should a student go to look for a part-time job opening? Immediately you think student center. Okay. Well, actually, as we skimmed, we saw part-time job. So this was very easy to find. That question literally took you two seconds. So your answer would be student center. Yeah? Okay. Super. Great job. Okay, this is where you can really make up time. All right, you've skimmed, and hopefully we can zip through this. Uh, okay, uh, Raphael, how about number 16? Which bus would a student who wants to go to the bookshop take? Hmm, okay, where would this information be, Raphael? Um, let's, let me see, transport. Um. Okay, we, transport. Maybe. All right. So you may think bus. Go to a turtle, catch the 45 bus from outside the Hurley main gate. Exactly the 34, uh, sorry, the 35, uh, 45 bus. Okay. The 45 bus. All right. But before we hastily write the 45 bus, uh, if Are we sure about that? Because here's the thing. He wants to go to the bookshop. Also, could be shopping information. All right. So if I quickly scan bookshop, oop, bookshop, uh, you may be right, but I'm also going to double check with shopping. Gundini has a small supermarket as well as a bookshop. So actually, maybe I have to scan both both things. All right. Ah, you want to go to Gundini. So I look at transport. Wait a minute. See the trick okay. here? Uh-huh. OK. So this is a little bit of a trick. Maybe you look at the buses first. You catch the 45 bus to uh, and, uh, okay, that goes to the local towns. If you wish to go to Gundini, catch the 67 bus. Catch the 67 bus, okay. Ah, so you, you got tricked. Any typical IELTS trick here? <laughs> uh, okay, th this is a good example of how they may try to fool you. All okay. right. We need to read all. Right. Think of... Uh, Yes. Two things. One, if as you jumped back and looked at transport first, which I would have also done, Raphael. I would have also done. But you need to be make sure, okay, where am I going to buy books? You might you see here they're talking about uh, a couple buses and also mini cab services, so different forms of transport so I can't be sure I would be guessing so look a little further uh, you know when you're jumping back to scan look a little further it's my advice to make sure that there's not just one bus one option if there's more options then you may have to rethink the question a little okay it was right. the first option that I have seen oh. Yes, so that's the mistake, yeah. Raphael. Don't automatically go with the first option unless it's very clear. Because, and the reason is, because the information is always in the reading passage. So even a question like this, he wants to go to the bookshop, there's, there's going to be something about bookshop. They're not going to let you infer that a student would have, would, they don't want you, they don't make it so that you would guess where the bookshop is all right they're going to tell you the information is in the reading passage so if it's not specifically said if you're not sure then you need to search a little more that's the lesson here okay okay thanks rafael max let's try 17 here okay where's this going to be Hmm. <laughs> uh, I, 
I don't remember. <laughs> okay, well, uh, what, are, what are they talking about here? Purchased. Keyword. Okay. Look for the keyword and think about that. So what... Uh, where the, you want to buy something, where's that going to be? Health services? You want to buy food? Hmm. Transport? Student center? International student office? Or shopping information? Which do you think? Oh, I think I don't know because I, I'm not clearly understand the question. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, let's talk about that. Which locally uh, grown? Okay. Oh, locally grown. Okay. Uh, see, okay. Let's talk about this a second. Actually, uh, Max, you have problems with locally grown and uh, purchased. Purchased and purchased. Okay. Well, purchased. First of all, let me talk about locally grown. You see two words together with a hyphen like this. This means this is an adjective. To simplify matters in confusing questions or confusing sentences in the reading passage. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Get rid of this. Throw it out. Which day can vegetables be purchased? All right. If now, this is going to be difficult if you don't know the meaning of purchase. But what do you do with vegetables on certain, on different days? You can get. perhaps guess. Get. <laughs> yeah, you get them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, I got to go. I, I'll be right okay. back. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. All right. All right, Heidi, since you're on the track, that's right. So you're going to get vegetables. Uh... What? Shopping information. Shopping information. Thank you. Okay. What are we gonna? What are we gonna search for here? That uh, obviously shopping information. Everything's purchased. So maybe vegetables or locally grown. Okay. In this section, can you see anything here about locally grown vegetables? Mm -hmm. So you you would scan through it. Mm -hmm. Do you see anything? You uh, you find a wide range of uh, food and drink as well as cleaning product. Oh no. Oh yeah, down. Uh huh. Biggest range of the show, shops. Most of them are located on the uh, main street. They have a big bar in the supermarket, a boutique, and Asian food store, and good, uh, what, reasonably, reasonably split restaurant. No, no vegetables. Ah, keep going. Don't give up too soon. <laughs> this is another lesson to be learned. Saturday morning, the wonderful farmer's market in the... Uh, Gandhi, Gandhi, where you can find sorts of fresh products from the local farms and the garden. Only this place, last, last line. Last line. Saturday morning, there's a wonderful farmer's market. Now, of course, you'd have to know what a farmer's market is, and you'd also have to know what fresh produce is. Mm -hmm. Fresh produce are our fresh vegetables. Okay, and a farmer's market is where they sell them, right? The farmer sells them directly to you. Not a, a farmer's market is a place, usually an open air market, usually a place without walls, and farmers can sell their produce or vegetables to you directly, usually cheaper. Here's another clue, actually. Uh, perhaps because we have... Uh, we have synonyms. Perhaps if we couldn't find it, here's another thing um, with this question, on which day? So perhaps we were searching for the wrong thing. Perhaps instead of vegetables, we should have been work looking for a day on Saturday. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, which is the question. So the answer to the question is obviously Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. So it may take it may take a little extra time. I know you're fighting the clock, but you, Heidi had to go to the end of the sentence to find the inform. Uh, sorry, the end of the paragraph to find the information she needed. Yeah. Well, that's going to happen. And sometimes maybe you won't find it, so you have to search in another paragraph. Uh, you have to pick another keyword and try again. But again, the information is always in there. So if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, as we say. Uh, okay, Faisal, it's back to you. Okay. Mm, I we saw uh, international student office okay that's you, get, you get all the easy ones for a show it's, 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 mm -hmm. yes in ah, fact yeah we saw. when we were also, right there's yeah. also a lawyer three days a week to help with visa and immigration visa keyword easily easy to find in fact when we were skimming I think I even mentioned it uh, so where where would you go? Obviously, key to look at the actual W word. Where on which when. day? Okay, when, etc. Make sure you're actually answering the question asked. But yep, definitely. Where would you go? International student office. Student office. Yep, easy enough. Raphael, let's continue. Okay. Okay. Um. Where can students go get sick on Sunday for medical help? Um, yeah. Well, I, I guess in health services, but sure. Okay, so uh, let's let's take a skimmy look here. Uh, health services, yeah. All right. So, so the we're question talking about right on a Sunday. That's correct. Very good. Okay. okay. Let's see. What do we see here? On the week on weekend from Saturday on Sunday. Oh, and all the other times, please use the town hospital. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, they should go. Where? Medic no. Um located the Harley Camps under the clinic available to our students. Uh maybe a little uh a little room for with a medic um uh a nurse inside of the campus, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, so and and so in the in the business days they can use the hospital. Uh, I don't know if, but okay. on Sunday the answer correct the uh, the exactly answer I think that where can someone go sick on Sunday? Yeah, that's right. Where can somebody who is sick on go on a Sunday? Right. So, in attendance from on on weekdays. Weekdays is week weekdays is the is on the weekend. Weekdays is Monday through Friday. Ah, okay. So this is a, the like business day, okay? Uh, yeah, right. Okay, weekdays, business days. Yes. In all other times. Ah, okay. And the use the town hospital. Okay, all other times, only the the Sunday. <laughs> That's, yeah, all other times is the town hospital. Yes, I also will have questions like this. The information is in the text, but the information is the only thing missing. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> uh, the weekend, right. Weekdays and on Saturday. So the only thing that's missing is. Uh, on Sunday, Sunday so, right? There you okay. go. So they uh, uh, should go to the town hospital. There you go. That's okay. it. 
that is the correct answer. Very good. Uh, okay. Uh, Max, are you back? Are you still yes. in this pose? <laughs> yes. Okay. Go put your room in the oh. center. Well, so yeah, here you go. To use. Uh, okay. Oh. Where can we look for this information, do you think? Maybe center for students, enough students. Student center. Student center. Okay. There's probably information about, since it says there's a computer room in the student center, there's probably information in the section about student centers, something about computers. So let's take a quick look. There's the paragraphs are split here. So first Maybe this one. International. Uh, I don't but see any, anything here about computers. Maybe. Let's look at this section. Uh, so you're uh, in the library. Uh -huh. In the library. Scan for look for a specific word or pair of words. Computer center for student use. Yeah. Additional computers are available in the library. So there you go. You got it. The answer is three the library. Three words. Yeah. Thanks. Uh thank you. You got it. Okay, Heidi, last question. If you wish to talk to a representative of the Students' Union. Student Center. Student Center. Are you sure? Well, it's always good to double check. Even if you're 99% sure, but you're not 100% sure. Student centers where the student unions have their offices and information board. Uh, okay. So, yes. I would advise just checking quickly. It just takes a couple extra seconds, but yes. Okay, notice most of these questions we could get through very quickly, but others we had to do an extra search, but that is very, very typical. Uh, here is another type of question or m other types of information that you may have questions about. Okay, we have a table here. What is the table? First of all, of course, as always, read the instructions. Always read the instructions. Read the course information. All right, we have course information for veterinary science below. Complete the summary. Use no more than three words for each answer. Okay. Uh, read the title of the table so you make sure you understand what it is, course information, and entry requirements. Okay, there's a little additional information from the instructions. Uh, okay, again, we're very organized with headings, although this, the headings are on the side. This is in the form of a table. Uh, okay. Let's just zip down course duration. How duration? How long? Five years. Units you need. Where's the campus? The course code minimum requirements prerequisites. Uh, okay. What do they What do they mean? If we don't know what what are prerequisites or requirements? Uh, okay. Uh, Year 12 or equivalent English, math, chem, physics. Uh, okay, I get it. All right, so what you must have accomplished before. Visa requirements. Okay, we should all know that. Fees. Okay, fees is the money. Closing date. Applications must be lodged. Okay. Uh, the Mac the latest date you can ap apply, inquiries for more information, we, inquiries, that's what that means. Okay, uh, now we have, we're going to fill in the blank, the, the written summary of that table. 
using the information. So because the information is very well organized, very clearly organized with headings, we don't bother to read every little bit. We can go pretty quickly to the questions. So, uh, Faisal, let's try this. If you wish to study flip and movie science at Northwestern Australian University, it's going on until year 12, blank, blank, blank. Wow. Um, let's see, you know, veterinary uh, completed schooling. Okay, so where can we find this completed schooling? Where do you think this information is? Um, Hey, maybe to the app. Uh, I don't know the, the I don't know the title. Title, title. Mm, yeah, title. Mm. Course, maybe minimum education requirements. Western yes, or, that's right. Uh, Australia. You must have completed Western Australian Year Twelve. National. Your foundation or oh, equivalent. Your twelve blank. Well, what do Equi you think? Equivalent. Y yes, but please, you must be grammatically correct. So you need the word or. Oh. So the the answer would be or equivalent. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, often in these table type uh, exercises in the general training, you can actually they, you, you just take it directly from the information. Okay, let's hmm. continue, Raphael. Okay, you must have. website enter school education when have included the following okay when you're professor all right the following blank and then see a hyphen and then English math chemistry physics okay it has English. to make grammatical sense including the following what was in the following. Um, Shall we take a look? Uh, skills, skills. No, I don't know. We don't have anything here. English and mathematics. Yes. So here the information is not actually provided. So. Uh, you must have included the following. What's happening with this? Uh, the following, uh, like uh, proofs, evidence, you know. Uh, 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 no. No. Okay. No. Maybe. Here, here are your clues. We first of all, we have the following, and then at following the gerund adjective, the following blanks blank. Uh, it's got to be a noun. Then we have the hyphen, and we have a list of things. This is listing this thing so it's got to be up the, and what are these things English math chemistry physics what are these called um, specializations specializations mm, yeah not necessarily and sometimes maybe they can classes. be they could be majors maybe classes the following classes but Here's a little trick they did here. Actually, classes, I'm not sure. Maybe you could get away with that. Uh, that may be an acceptable answer, but in university, these are called courses. Actually, they give you the answer in the answer. Uh, as outlined on the course website. Mm. So I know that the following courses would definitely be correct. Classes maybe courses. might work, but courses, yes. Here's the difference. Uh, okay, in high school and elementary school, you take classes in English, math, etc. In university, 
English speakers take courses in chemistry, physics, etc. Okay. All right. So courses, and you must write courses. If you write singular, it's wrong. Okay, let's continue. Heidi. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Max. Max's turn. Sorry, Heidi. Okay. An Australian student visa essential for this course of study to be first visa you must manual full time to be something uh, for a student visa. Maybe uh grown up <laughs> something. <laughs> grown up for a student <laughs> visa? What do you okay? <laughs> Let's see. Let's uh, see. Student visa, obviously, we're going to look in this section. Visa required to be. Mm -hmm, you must. To be what for a student visa? Rate of 18%. Okay. 18. Uh, uh, to be blank, uh, and a Australian a student visa is essential. Australian student visa is essential. You must have it. Essential. Uh, to be blank for a student visa, you must enroll full time for five years. Okay. What do you need? You need to be something. Uh, verb. Because we have. All right. To be. Oh, no, no, adjective. To be something for a student visa. It's, the answer's right here, buddy. Uh, okay. Enroll? <laughs> no. Uh, to, uh, be to be eligible. Yes. Eligible. 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 I don't know it's worth. Um, to <laughs> but be, now look up. Okay, let, let's. Okay, let's help your. Let's build your vocabulary. Eligible means that you qualify for something. Uh, this word is often used to talk about a bachelor who's unmarried. He's an eligible young man. He's eligible. He's qualified. He's ready to be married. We use eligible for that. Uh, a prisoner may be eligible for parole. He qualifies and he can be paroled into public life. Uh, a student okay. must, in order to be eligible to get a visa to qualify, he must take four or five, enroll for four or five years. Okay. I so, got it. Thanks. to be eligible. Right. Now, it may happen in the IELTS test, the actual word, you don't know the meaning of the word, so you're hesitant to use it. But don't be. Go for it. If you can see that it's basically in the same form, to be blank, uh, all right, and, and you know you need an ad, okay, uh, I-B-L-E, another clue there, I-B-L-E words are adjectives, and you know you need an adjective, so... A pretty good guess. Sometimes thinking about the word form that you need that fits in the grammatical structure can be a very useful clue, especially if you don't know the actual meaning of the vocabulary word. Maybe that would help. Uh, okay, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Okay, you must attend blank. You must attend at least of 80% or more than 80% of the classes on the student visa. Well, which one is it? We better check. More than. Uh, requires a minimum attendance of 80%. Right off. Uh, you must attend more than. Uh, more than what? Well. At least. Uh, oh, more than or at least. More than 80%. At least 80%. Uh, 
okay, at least fits better, right? Or you could just pick it right from here, a minimum hmm. of. If you use a minimum, a minimum of, or at least, mm -hmm. uh, okay, at, a minimum of and at least mean the th same thing. But Heidi, more than means it must be eighty-one percent or eighty point zero one. I don't know. It doesn't mean exactly the same thing. I do believe more than would be wrong, even though it's extremely close. Mm -hmm. At least can be exactly 80%. A minimum of can be exactly 80%. Mm -hmm. Using the construction more than means it's got to be at least 80.01%. <laughs> has to be greater than. So that doesn't, that's uh, not, yeah. right? Okay, so be careful of that kind of thing there. But okay. Yes, but you're right. And there's very uh, often that more than one answer could be uh, could be used. Actually, that happens quite a bit. There may be uh, extremely synonymous words or word constructions, like I just discussed with Heidi. B both those answers would be correct. I'm I'm very sure. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, uh, Faisal. You must hope I put in my finger then. September 30th. Okay. Best semester. Uh, let's see to the other detail, but uh, it's one of the Vizal Cartman. Let's see. Okay, here's the information. In order to commence study. Oh. Application was launched. This mm -hmm. is September 30th. Ah, then, so here, they're not, the information is here, but you have to know the English construction. Mm, you must agree to the Western Australian territory. Western Australian territory. So what no, word do you use? You wait, wait, wait. Apply, apply and lock is same, same meaning, same word. Sorry. Apply. Apply, apply and lock is same word. What is the second word you're using? Lodge? Uh, lodge. Like lodge. Uh, uh, okay, you lodge something, you submit it. <clears throat> it's a verb here. Okay, okay. So maybe it's... Well, so is apply, actually. Oh, uh, did it commence? You're, you're over... Th first of all, I can tell you're overthinking this. Admission center... Because it already, it already says you must apply. In order to, uh, oh, you must put to, in order to comment, uh, in order to, eh, no, 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 no. Ah, it's, ah it's, they're tricking you. Here's how they're tricking you, okay? You're thinking, you're overthinking, you're thinking, um, you're thinking of it in terms of the answer is going to be something concrete, a noun, a verb, an adjective. Mm. It's not. It's a in actuality the the answer here is a preposition. Oh. Just a connector between the two phrases. That's Fru? it. Yes. Okay. Oh. Through September. Not through. Through means through. Uh, it has to be because this is a deadline. September thirtieth. This is the last day. So you must until, apply. Until. Not until, uh, before, before or by, either of those words would work. Mm. Okay, this this is the trick. They want to know if you understand time phrases. What is the difference between until, before, through? Uh, okay, so the, a, with a deadline, it's by or before, by Shaw. Mm. Okay. Oh. Uh, I could say this a totally different way. You have until September 30th to apply blah, 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 blah. You have until, up until that time. All right. Mm. But 
because of the construction of the sentence, I have to use by or before. Uh, okay, Raphael, last one. If you require... Bleep. So, yes, the answers in the reading, especially in the GT, this is very rare in the academic model, especially in the GT, can in fact be a connective uh, simple preposition. Um, I've even seen uh, pronouns, possibly. He, she, they. Those are rare. You have one of those on the whole test, usually, uh, I might add. Okay, Raphael, next one. If you require... Beep. You can call uh, or see the university more, website. More yeah. information or further S information. Simple, or simple enough. More information or further information, either one would be completely correct. Okay. Very good. Ooh. Now we have a long academic article. You can see all the EFG, HIJK, whatever. Uh, we're going to try this because we only have 12 minutes left to class. We're going to try this using the method. We're not even going to look at it. We're going to try a different strategy. Okay, we're not even going to skim it or scan it. Let, let's see just how this works. Maybe it won't work at all. I don't know. Um, okay, first of all, maybe I'm looking at the, the questions. Uh, first question is a list of people. Well, people's names are relatively easy to scan for. They're easy to find in the body of a reading passage. That's probably all we're going to have time for. Oh, maybe the wow. evil, true, false, not given. I hate that. You hate that? Me too. Don't we all? <laughs> I agree. They're very tricky. Uh, okay. What is What kind of strategy can we use here? We have we have to match each description here scanning. with the cor correct yeah. person. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna scan, but what should we be scanning for? What do you think? Should we scan for this information or scan yeah. for this information and then which way should we do it? Obviously we could do it either way. Um, which would be easier? We list, list of people first? I think so. I think it's easier to find capital letters, plus many of these things, of course, Fugu, Fugu Chef, Fugu Poisoning, Fugu Biologist, Fugu Victims, lots of Fugu, Fugu, Fugu. <laughs> uh, before we start, Heidi, have you ever had Fugu? Yeah. You've eaten it? Really? Yeah. Okay, you're very brave. <laughs> no, it's like normal. Yes. No, it's not. You're extremely brave. You're a warrior. Does anybody else in the class know what fugu is? I Some kind of fish, fish maybe. Not. Yeah, I Some have no idea. Puffy, no idea. Puffy fish. Puffer fish, yeah. Puffer fish. Puffer fish, right. Food for thought. Doesn't The title here doesn't help you. Poison in their kidney. Right. Tetrodotoxin. All right. Actually... We're going to try this by looking at the questions, but we should, especially since it's a very brief first introductory paragraph, and since the title gives us no clue at all, we should definitely look at this first paragraph. Have you ever eaten a food that might kill you? Heidi has. <laughs> That's what thousands of Japanese and Koreans do every no, year. I killed it. <laughs> you killed it? When they sit down to a delicious meal of fugu fish, also puffer fish. Puffer fish. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. All right, let's let's try it by looking at the names. Yuko Honda. We can pronounce. We can practice our pronunciation of uh, Japanese names. Now, here's another thing. Uh, how do we want to scan for this? Well. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. You could start at the bottom and scan up. You could scan down. I got you go find. You do, you got it. Who's got it? And the C C C paragraph. Ah. C. Dr. Yukahonda. Okay. Um all right. Now 
here's another possible strategy. I we haven't even really we haven't memorized the the definitions or the information about these people. So uh, who is this guy? Can you find the title of the talk I mentioned? This is a he's a he's a biologist. The title of the talk is a okay thing and the food. Ooh, okay. okay. Well, all right. We quickly found him. He's a biologist at Kensai. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, which answer? Can you see it? 30. Yes, number 30, right? So 30 is A. We can cross out 30. We've got it. We've matched it. 30A. That was easy. Simple. Okay, let's take a look for the other one. Let's make a contest. Let's see who can find it first. Hiroshi Takamura. I like saying Japanese names. Heidi, don't get mad at me. Okay. Hiroshi Takamura. Because you get to shout them. <laughs> They're fun to say. Uh, you have you have challenge us, John. They're fun to say and challenging. Oh, oh, I no, found. that that. Where where? Uh, e paragraph uh, in, the, in the third third line. Third line. Four. You guys are fast. Yeah. You guys are so fast. Okay, says. All right, blah blah blah. Says Hiroshi Takamura. Kama, Fugu Chef at the popular Kintatsu. Kintatsu? Kintatsu. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank goodness you're here, Heidi, to help with my horrible Japanese. I love trying it, but I'm not good at it. Okay. Oh, there, we even have Kintatsu. This Fugu is chef. easy. Fugu <laughs> Chef. B. Okay, let's, let's continue. Ne all right, Naot Naotaro. 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 Now. Oh yeah, I've had students named now, for short. Naotaro. <laughs> Kageyama. 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 Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> Very helpful. <sighs> okay, let's take a look at this. And you may, okay, as you uh, go along here. Here's the thing. We have we have Yuko Honda and then uh, Hiroshi here. They seem to be going in order, so let's keep looking in order. Where is Neatoro? Now, oh, now. that that at the F paragraph, the third Faisal. line. Faisal is an expert at the scanning. <laughs> Very good, Faisal. Max, come on, Raphael. Uh, Faisal's kicking your butts. Okay. <laughs> no, I found Nakoro. <laughs> Faster. Found push, another one. <laughs> push your buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Japanese food writer, Naotaro Kegiyama. Kegiyama. <laughs> so hard. Okay, can we find food writer? Mm -mm -mm. There it is. Very good. Uh, okay. Kazuko Nishimura. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Female. <laughs> Female. Okay. Here's something I always actually. Uh, paragraph G. <laughs> paragraph G. Oh, you guys are so fast. Who is she? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a gun line. That's one yeah. Victim. She's a victim. Ah, victim. Wow. <laughs> ah. Okay. We have victim. Victim. Yes, we do. All right. As we can see, now, you've got four of them. You're absolutely positive, or I am absolutely positive. Am I going to take time looking for this one? <laughs> no. What is the point? By process of elimination, he must be the doctor. Right? I, I don't have to worry about that. A question for Heidi. Mm -hmm. Heidi, he, when I read these list of names, 
I cannot tell who's male or female. Uh, is, Harumi, both. Is there a secret or yeah. no? Female or male, Harumi. The other, the Yuko is a female. But there's no secret. There's no vowel at the end or there's nothing that gives away that it's male or female. No? No. Both. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I shall forever be clueless. Okay. Here we go. All right. True, false, not given. Uh, these are difficult. Uh, okay. We, we may not totally get into this. And by the way, before I forget, I could not book a class for tomorrow at this time. However, on Saturday at this same time slot, I will do another IELTS reading class. Uh, okay? Not tomorrow. We're, we're kind of skipping a day. I couldn't get the class time. Uh, okay. If it's true, it absolutely has to be absolutely in the reading passage. It may be slightly disguised with synonymous words or phrases. If it's false, it contradicts. That means it's totally the opposite of what is said. Uh, and, or not given, there is just no information. Let's see if we can do at least one of these. Uh, actually, let's pick pick an easy one. I'm gonna because we're running out of time. Thirty people die each year <laughs> from fugo poisoning. <laughs> see, Heidi's a daredevil. All right, but let's look carefully. More. They, they Thirty by, people die. By themselves. Yes, exactly. the The article does talk about that. Oh. 30 people, do you see it? I see it already. 30, here. 30 people, there it is. So, in this sort of question, you want to read a little before and a little after the information as I scan for it. There's 30 people. Uh, luckily, no one else who shared the meal was effective. A single fugu has enough poison to kill up to 30 people. But it's nothing, so nothing that year is false. Is it, uh, is it false? Yeah. Uh, not given. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm checking quickly to see if I see anything about 30 people. I'm actually look, scanning for numbers. 120 species, no. Uh, 3,000 restaurants, no. Does it say anything about how many people? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Especially since this is obviously about victims. One such victim. I'm going to scan a little more carefully. Fewer than 50% of victims survive. And it is not a very pleasant death, Heidi. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, all right, that's it. That's all I see. Um, exactly. So, think of the question this way. More is it false or not given? It is not given. We have no idea how many people die each year. Mm. None. No indication is given whatsoever. In order for this to actually be false, we would have to be given a different number. Twenty people oh. die each year. Uh, yeah, maybe several. At maybe several. Mm -hmm. We don't know. The information is simply not given. So there, that's a very good example of how it would be easy to pick faults, but in fact, that information is not given. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry to say, but we are out of time. Um, good practice today. Thank you very much. Um, I think it was a, a good practice of the GT version of the test. Quite unlike the academic version, the academic version has all those long passages, three long passages. The GT may be a little bit easier because the, easier, the information is easier to scan for. It's usually organized into headings or a table or bullet points. Although, even on the GT test, you will have at least one of the, uh, one of the academic passage style questions definitely uh, okay uh, I gotta go sorry
But uh, <laughs> ciao for now, and I'll see you guys soon. Hopefully, I'll see you Saturday. Uh -huh. Bye. <laughs>